It's mid-August, and it's time for another garden update. Even though it's been very hot lately, the garden is still producing lots of good stuff to eat. I had already harvested the first row of potatoes several weeks ago, and it was time to harvest the second row. I planted no dig potatoes this year, which means I don't have to use a shovel or fork to dig them up. This one was a red Pontiac. I planted three types of potatoes, red Pontiac, Yukon Gold, and a blue type. This is one of the Yukon Golds, and some of those got pretty large. We did get some large potatoes, but we also got a lot of small ones. To plant these potatoes, I put the seed potatoes on top of the ground. I covered them with yew straw and leaves. Then I added more yew straw as they grew. Here's another one of the red Pontiacs. And as you can see, we did get a lot of smaller potatoes. This is the first time I grew potatoes using this method. So I learned quite a bit. And one thing I learned is that I didn't water often enough. I thought the straw would retain moisture much better than it actually did. Here's a look at what we got from that one row. As you can see, there's three different types, and they vary quite a bit in size. Some of them are very large, and some of them are very small. We've got about a half a dozen watermelons that have set on so far. We're growing two types, Crimson Sweet and Moon and Stars. Here's two of them together, and the largest one is the Moon and Stars. As you can see, they have yellow spots. I harvested a whole bunch of Ahi Rico peppers recently, and they're very attractive peppers and pretty good to eat. I did a taste test, and I'll be posting that very soon. I also did a taste test of some Sun Gold cherry tomatoes. I've heard a lot of good things about those from people, and I finally got to try some. That video will be coming in the near future also. Here's that sun gold cherry tomato plant out in the garden. I planted this one very late and this is the one that I grafted four different dwarf tomatoes onto. You can see one of the grafted tomatoes on there right now. It's the lemon ice and I think there are three of those tomatoes. There's another one of the grafts that has already set tomatoes, and it's the kookaburro cackle, and I think there are three or four of those. The other two grafts have blooms, but no tomatoes yet. The okra has done very well this year, even though I haven't really talked about it much, and it's been keeping me busy picking okra. The peppers are still doing great. This one is a Rowia, and it has one near the bottom that's getting ripe, but it's still setting on quite a bit at the top. As you can see, this branch broke from the weight of these two peppers, and I learned my lesson and staked it up after I got done with the video. Right next to the Rowia is the Blot Pepper, and it's got quite a few peppers on it and a couple of them are getting pretty large. And we finally have one near the bottom that is getting ripe. So I'm going to be doing a taste test on that one very soon. This is the F3 Black Pearl Hybrid that I have growing out in the garden and it's doing very well and finally getting quite a few peppers on it. The Cubanel pepper plant still has quite a few peppers on it, and it's setting on quite a few at the top. This was the first time I've ever grown that one. One of the last pepper plants to set peppers was the Heritage Big Jim Chili Pepper. And as you can see, it's making up for lost time. The Jimmy Nardella pepper is very productive as usual, and I can see that there are a few that are ready to pick. This is a Sugar Rush cream pepper plant, and I have grafts from seven different peppers growing on it, and some of them have peppers on them already. And this plant is also producing peppers of its own. 
This pepper is a buena mulata. And next to it is an unknown pepper. And in the middle there, that dark one is the F3 Black Pearl Hybrid. Then we have a couple of ahi peppers, a ahi pineapple and an ahi lemon that both have peppers on them already. And some of them are pretty good size. And those grafts are doing very well and growing fast. On the other side, I have another pepper that has a pepper on it, but I'm not sure yet what that is. I didn't take notes because it was raining on the day I did the grafts. The Mega Gold Pepper did very well for us last year and it finally has a few peppers on it. It's getting off to a late start. On the other side of that plant, I have an Oda that's grafted onto it and it's got a little pepper on it too. One tip if you grow Lesia peppers, they're pretty heavy peppers so they really need to be tied up. I didn't tie this one up and I lost two branches with several peppers on each branch. The Buena Mulata pepper plant is still pumping out the peppers. The more I pick, the more it makes. The orange hat tomatoes in the stackable pots are producing quite a few tomatoes and still have a lot on. I've already pulled out some of our pole bean plants, but I left this one. It's the rattlesnake and it's still producing blooms and beans. The Carmenot pole beans are just about done, but I'm letting a few mature so I can save some seeds from those. Back against the fence, I haven't talked about it very much, but I have one cage with some melons growing in it. And we're finally getting some melons that are setting on, and a couple won't be long, and it'll be ready to pick. Here's the other side of that same cage, and as you can see, we've got quite a few melons just in that one cage. And one of them's about ready to pick. I hope this one is fully ripe. It slipped off the vine very easily, so I think it is. And over in this area, I have something pretty unique I'd like to show you. It's an Oda pepper plant with some variegated leaves. I'm not sure if this is something that's physiological or it's genetic, but I'll be saving seeds just in case it's genetic. You can see one of the leaves there. And on this side, there's another one. And speaking of variegated peppers, I found this volunteer jigsaw pepper growing. I'll be harvesting all of the corn soon, but I went ahead and picked a couple more ears. I was expecting these hybrids to be more ornamental this year, but I really wasn't expecting all of the yellow kernels. Some of the sunflowers over next to the bananas are leaning pretty badly because the bananas are crowding them quite a bit. All of my pepper projects are doing pretty well. Here's some of those F3 black pearls. I've got quite a few different hybrids that turned out pretty well this year and I'll be working on saving seeds from those and trying to decide which ones to carry forward and which ones not. From this point on, I think I'm gonna to try to produce two generations each year. In order to do that, I need to start some seedlings. Here's one of my more interesting pepper seedlings so far. One of the cotton leaden leaves is half pink. Here's the albino bullnose pepper. I've harvested quite a few peppers off of it and it still has lots more to harvest. I picked some tomatoes, some Oda peppers, some albino bullnose peppers, and some Buena Malata peppers. Then I picked some Corbaki and some Jimmy Nardello. And some more Buena Malata. While I was wandering around looking at peppers, I found some more tomatoes. I picked a bunch of ahi ricos, and there were still a bunch to pick. On top went some sugar rush creams and one heritage Big Jim chili pepper. 
that I picked very small. The sunflowers have done very well this year. This one's probably about eight or nine feet tall. And these over by the bananas would be about 12 or 13 feet tall if they were standing up straight. And this volunteer sunflower over by the fence grew a pretty impressive head on it. The sugar tip Rose of Sharon is just now starting to bloom well. Even though it's our smallest Rose of Sharon, I think it's my favorite. We picked a whole bunch of Shishito peppers the other day, and it looks like there's still some that could be picked. And right behind those are the Korbakis, and there's some ripe ones there too. Right next to those peppers are the Shady Lady tomatoes, and there are quite a few small green ones near the top. I thought you might enjoy a slow motion look at some of the pollinators on our sunflowers. These are some of our Velvet Queen sunflowers with honeybees. Hummingbirds really like our Rose of Sharon, and so do hummingbird moths. Here's a slow motion look at one of those. As I've mentioned before, I could use a little help, so don't forget to like this video and share it. Thanks a bunch for watching. We'll see you next time.